After learning that he would not be going to the 2022 World Cup, David De Gea made some huge saves to preserve United's win against West Ham and over in Spain. The title race took another turn as Real were held by whom? We'll find out, fellas. Hey, thanks for joining me, by the way. I'm Adrian, and happy Monday to you. And if you're new here, why not subscribe and join this community? Weekend recaps every Monday. Plenty of Champions League coverage, explainer videos, opinion pieces. There will be a lot of World Cup coverage and more. So let's go. Liverpool is where we'll start as for the second weekend running, they have been shocked by a team that sits not just in the bottom half of the table, but was in the bottom three places in the table. Last week, Liverpool were shocked by Nottingham Forest, and this week, Leeds United got the better of them somehow at Anfield. Liverpool are truly out of sorts right now, and a lot of that comes down to their defense and the midfield that sits in front of them. None of their back line, save perhaps you know, Andy Robertson, can be trusted to not make a mistake in this game. Gomez is culpable. Alexander-Arnold has been in the past, and even more worryingly, Virgil van Dijk continues to make costly errors for Liverpool, but it was his partner Gomez that made the mistake that gave Rodrigo Moreno the opener, only for Salah to respond 10 minutes later. From there, Liverpool weren't overly convincing in possession, and Darwin Nunez had one of those misfiring matches for them. To be fair, I mean, Meslier made an incredible save to deny him once, but for his other opportunities, there can be no excuses. And with Liverpool laboring to get a go-ahead goal, it was snatched at the last four leads by Somerville. 2-1, another loss for Liverpool, but this time at Anfield. The first time Van Dijk has lost at home in the Premier League, and based on current form, Liverpool will not make the Champions League. Klopp even admitted it himself, so a massive turnaround is needed. Diego Costa is back to his best as he got himself sent off for a headbutt towards the end of Wolves' draw away to Brentford. <laughs> the equalizer from Ruben Neves was nice outside of the box, of course, as per. Man City were still without Erling Haaland as he went off at halftime in the Champions League with a tendon issue. They'll be hoping he's back very, very soon, but in the meantime, they have other brilliant players like Kevin De Bruyne, who scored from a free kick, and my god, was that sexy. That was one of my favorite free kicks in some time. You guys know I love a bar down goal, you know, the strikes that bang off of the crossbar and in. Well, one that banks off of the post and in is a close second for me. Stunning strike from the Belgian, 1-0 City. Tottenham had to come from behind up against Bournemouth, and things looked a little bit frigid for Conte and the fellas at halftime. 1-0 down, only to go 2-0 down just four minutes into the second half, and then they finally woke up. Hoybier played Sessegnon through and his strike across the keeper banked in off of the post. Also nice. Of course, not as nice as De Bruyne's bank, of course. Then Ben Davies headed it in from a corner to equalize and finally Ben Tancur converted from a corner as well to give them the win and send Conte down the tunnel. Wow, what drama. I mean, Conte heading down the tunnel as he thought VAR would rob a winner from his side once again as it did against Sporting and claimed he would have a heart attack if that was the case. 3-2 for Tottenham. Newcastle United are making a statement after statement in the Premier League as they trashed Aston Villa with ease, beating Unai Emery's new side 4-0 at home. Miguel Almiron continues to shine. What a treasure he is, eh? Really, really arriving and showing that he can grow to be as dominant as he was once back when he was in MLS. He's come a long way with Newcastle. It's great to see a player of his talent absolutely thriving. Speaking of, Callum Wilson did thrive as well in this match as he scored a brace and actually provided the ball to Elmiron. And Joelington got a goal as well. Newcastle United play Southampton next and then Chelsea in what will be their final match before the World Cup break. Speaking of Chelsea, it was the revenge of the X or the X's, I guess, as Brighton smashed Chelsea 4-1 at the Amex Community Stadium. Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Trevor Chalaba with some own goals and in fact, I believe that finally broke the long-standing record of Chelsea being undefeated when Chalaba starts for them. Trossard with another goal which bodes well for Belgium. The man has scored seven now with that hat-trick against Liverpool, a goal against City, and now a goal against Chelsea. I mean, he's not shy against the bigger teams. Arsenal trashed Nottingham Forest 5-0 as Reese Nelson caught a brace and an assist in this one. Lovely team goals, lovely strikes from the likes of Partey, great header from Martinelli as he takes his tally up to 5 on the season, Odegaard got another one, and Arsenal looked really, really good. I want to reiterate that, especially after there were some murmurs beginning about them after going two matches without a win in all competitions, some murmurs about whether Forrest were starting to find their stride, etc. But one thing that will be frustrating for some supporters will be the goal scoring form of Gabriel Jesus. Slight concern, I should say. 
as they are finding goals from everywhere else on the pitch and he is contributing such as his two assists on the day but he has scored just twice in his last 10 matches he was scoring for fun early and it seems to be a bit more difficult for him right now marcus rashford continues to be manchester united's most inform attacker as his powered header from a brilliant christian erickson cross was what gave them the win over west ham a special one as well as that was rashford's 100 for the united ten hag handed ronaldo a full 90 and the man just couldn't really hit the target once again unfortunately for him not sure that this will have convinced Ten Hag to play him when Martial is fit or Anthony is in the starting 11. It was touch and go for United, however, as De Gea made a couple of massive saves at full stretch to preserve that one goal lead. But they got there in the end, which means that United are just one point behind Newcastle and they have a match in hand. While Arsenal retain their two point lead over Man City, Liverpool ninth place on just 16 points. Still about two thirds of the season to go, though, of course. Almeria got a rather large victory this past weekend as they defeated Celta Vigo 3-1, taking full advantage of their one-man advantage to go 3-1 up in the second half. Previously, Gabriel Vega had put Celta 1-0 up after 25 minutes, but seven minutes later, he saw red, and the rest is history. Cadiz versus Atletico Madrid, a poor performance from Atleti once again, and as Simeone says, nothing is going right for them in this moment. Those words could have been used to describe Juan Felix's fortunes at the club, second choice, well, I mean, not even second choice. He was often third choice and not even a guarantee to come on off of the bench at times. But with Atleti 2-0 down, Juan Felix was handed an opportunity and he made the most of it. His first goal, a bicycle kick, was fortunate as it went off of a defender and then in for 2-1 Cadiz. His second was a laser from the edge of the box to make it 2-2. Minimal celebrations, all focused to go on and win the thing. But it was Cadiz who got it. Schoolboy defending from Atleti, a half-hearted claim of handball from Simeone as the ball kind of bounced off the attacker funny. 3-2 Cadiz, a surprise for sure as Cadiz are favorites to get relegated this season. That took them up to 10 points from just 12 games, which is not a good return for Cadiz. Speaking of disappointments, Sevilla lost at home against Real, a side that is getting increasingly tricky, aren't they? Alvaro Garcia scored the winner in the 61st minute, and let me remind you, they have Raul de Tomas on the way as well. If he finds any sort of potency for them, as he has done so for teams like Espanyol and even Real Vallecano for a couple of seasons in the past, watch out for these guys. They will continue to be a bit of a problem for everyone. No guarantee of any points with them under Andoni Iraola. Real Valladolid had their two-match winning streak halted by Osasuna, a team that is flirting with top six placements so far this season. Shimi Avila was amongst the goals converting from the penalty spot, while Moy Gomez had his goal eventually confirmed after a lengthy VAR review. 2-0 up after just 20 minutes, and they just rode it out from there. Barcelona labored at times away to Valencia at the Mestalla. They looked a bit flat hungover following all of the disappointments that will have hit them so far this season, but they got the win at the very end thanks to Robert Lewandowski. It came at a cost though, as both Kunde and Eric Garcia went off injured for Barcelona, and the frustrations would have perhaps boiled over for them if Lino's goal had stood. But thankfully for them, an idiotic handball from Marcos André cancelled that goal out. No idea what he was thinking there. Lewandowski's winner was his 13th of the season. He's the runaway leader in La Liga currently. Real Madrid had a bizarre match, a difficult one as well, at home against Girona. After Girona did so well to make it 1-1, Rodrigo thought he had the winner, but the goal was called back as he had been ruled to have dispossessed the keeper when the keeper had apparently had control of the ball under his arm. As you can see here, what do you guys make of this one? I'm curious to hear what you think. Let me know. And matches in Spain were finishing late. So, editor Adrian will take care of the rest in Spain. Go ahead, kid. Hello, this is Editor. So, Villarreal lost their first match without Unai Emery. Nothing new there, as Unai wasn't exactly lighting it up for them in La Liga. They fell 1-0 to Athletic Club in Yaki Williams with the goal. And Real Sociedad was doing so well at home against Real Betis, only for a late 1-2 from Juan Cruz and Borja Iglesias to give Betis the win. Shout out Alex Moreno for assisting both goals. That means that Betis jumps over Sociedad into fourth in the standings for now. Real Madrid's draw cuts their lead to just one point ahead of Barcelona. And Osasuna, as mentioned, are circling like hawks. 
Bayern Munich had six separate scores in their match against Mainz, winning 6-2, in which they are we are seeing Eric Chupamoting continue his fine form. He scored Bayern sixth, meaning he scored six goals across five consecutive matches for Bayern. He's really making that starting position his own, really justifying his selection as he also got an assist on the day. This man is prolific at the moment. Sadio Mane also got a goal and two assists. Gnabry had one, Musiala had one, Goretzka continues to shine, he had one, and Matthijs Tell had one as well. After he replaced Mane for the last 15 minutes or so, 6-2 was the final score there. I already told you that, you already knew it. An 85th minute goal from Nicholas Fulkrug gave Werder a 1-0 victory over Hertha. Their first victory in three matches now as they were on a two-match losing skid prior to this. Fulkrug update. Nine goals and two assists in 12 Bundesliga appearances. That's amazing. The hurting continues for Bayer Leverkusen. Another Bundesliga match day, and they find themselves falling further and further behind those in the top six. They went away to RB Leipzig, who of course were fresh off of that midweek win over Real Madrid, and they didn't really provide much. Just one shot on target from Leverkusen from five attempts, whereas the two most informed attackers for Leipzig and Kunku and Timo Werner provided the goals for their side. Werner has now scored nine and assisted four and 15 appearances across all competitions for Leipzig. So he's certainly quite happy to be back in Germany, namely back home at Leipzig. Love that guy. I'm very glad to see that Chelsea didn't break him. The team that held Leipzig to a 3-3 draw last weekend, Augsburg, fell 2-1 away to Stuttgart. These two are always so close together in the table that matches against each other always hold huge importance. Maybe not now, but later. Stuttgart are actually starting to find some form since sacking their manager, Pellegrino Matarazzo. Michael Wimmer getting Stuttgart their second win in their last three matches now. The loss, of course, being that 5-0 drubbing from Borussia Dortmund. So win sandwiching that horrible result. Speaking of Borussia Dortmund, by the way, they got what could be a massive victory for themselves as they beat Eintracht Frankfurt 2-1 away. No easy feat as they are trying to get on a good run of form themselves. Part of their good fortune could be the big performances from Jude Bellingham, who I'll remind you is still just 19, man. I'm reminding myself of that because I often forget. He's been around for so long. But anyway, he scored his third Bundesliga goal of the season, his ninth of the season across all competitions, already beating his previous best goals tally by three. And we're only in October of this season. Brands with the other goal, well, Yusufa Mukoko got another assist as he leads the team with four assists and four goals. Dortmund really are spreading the goals around nicely. Four goals is enough to lead the team in the Bundesliga. That is pretty crazy. Wolfsburg got a big 4-0 victory over Bochum. Bochum are a strange team, aren't they? I, I mean, I guess a lot of their good form comes from them playing at home. So going away, yeah, makes sense. And of course, Union Berlin hosted Borussia Mönchengladbach and things looked a little bit spooky for a while. As Geraldo Becker had a goal called off only for Nico Alvedi to power home a header just two minutes later. But following an incredibly dominant second half, Union drew themselves level in the 79th minute and got the win in an incredibly epic fashion with Danilo Doki scoring in the 97th minute. A ball in from Luling was headed past the keeper, meaning that Union hold their one point lead over Bayern at the very top of the table for another match day. Wow, what a way to get a result as well. And who do they play next? Bayer Leverkusen away. Borussia Dortmund, Freiburg, etc. aren't so far off either. It's another great competitive Bundesliga season. Napoli just cannot be stopped. They are flying unbelievably high still this season. Victor Osimhen haunted Sassuolo on this Halloween-ish weekend, getting a hat trick as he continues to build up some form following his injury. Six goals in his last five matches. And they also have Giovanni Simeone and Raspadori waiting in the wings to score as well, so they have options. Mario Rui also got a brace of assists to take his tally up to six on the season, which is an incredible amount from 13 appearances across all competitions. And that Georgian fella, yeah, he scored again. Kovaric Skelia's incredible season continues, scoring his sixth Serie A goal to go with his seven assists from 12 appearances. It's crazy. Eight goals and 10 assists across all competitions. Mega nuts. Just as they came onto the pitch and closed the gap against Benfica, Juve can thank their youngsters for getting them the win against Loli Lecce. The Englishman, Samuel Illing Jr., set up the bean man, Nicolo Fagioli, and the bean man scored an absolute beauty. The first Serie A goal for his career for the good old Nico Beans, and we didn't have to hear any tired excuses from Allegri this time. <laughs> He's becoming one of my favorite characters, to be honest with you, as I find his press conferences must watch stuff or must 
must read stuff because I know speak Italiano. Solid performance from Hakan Chalonolu as Inter slapped three past Sampdoria. A big save was required of Onana, however, to get their fourth Serie A clean sheet of the season. Stefan de Vrij with the opener for Inter as he headed from a corner. Then Barella with yet another goal. The way he goes through the middle of the pitch so consistently and the finishing he has added to his game this season. What a player. My God. The final goal was scored by Correa, a frustrating player to watch, to be honest with you. So inconsistent based on his Lazio performances, you would expect far more from him. But a great goal, collecting it in his own half, opting not to dish it to Lukaku, and ripping one into the top corner himself for 3-0 Inter. But you know what? Inter are really picking up some form after a shaky start to the season, aren't they? Undefeated in their last seven matches, of which they have won six of them, so credit to Inzaghi, they're looking great. Some of the attacking football they're playing is just a joy to watch. Atalanta got back to their winning ways this weekend as they beat Empoli 2-0, and yes, Adamola Lukman scored once again. He's in fantastic form for La Dea, four goals in his last five matches. And the way that Lazio collapsed at home against Salernitana, I was in shock as I ate my quesadilla. After looking so good lately, like they can really build on their form and have a run at the top teams, Lazio lost at the Stadio Olimpico after they had led in the game for the second time this season. You cannot do that. Last time, we'll give them a break. It was against Napoli, one of the best teams in Europe. But against Salernitana? I don't care what kind of form they're in at the moment, you cannot let this happen if you have higher ambitions than just top six. First, Antonio Candreva scored a stunner, beautiful touch to control, and a padded finish over the keeper. Lovely from him against his former club. Then Federico Fazio smashed one past the keeper, the former AS Roma player haunting Lazio, and Bulaidia capped off a great performance and a great counterattack for Salernitana's third. Lazio lost their heads at 2-1, in every way, really. Vecino missing that chance when he was all alone behind the defenders after a fortuitous bounce. Unforgivable. You gotta at least trouble the keeper. 3-1 Salernitana from 1-0 down. Their great form continues. And again, matches are ending late in Italy, so editor Adrian will cover that now. AC Milan played a terrible match away to Torino, going 2-0 down in a two-minute period in the first half and never really looking like they would be able to get themselves back into it. 2-1 the final there, and Napoli's lead is at 5 over Atalanta, 6 over Milan, while Lazio's loss allowed Inter to draw level. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for the 11th edition of the Weekend Recap this season. As always, I thank you for watching. If you didn't skip anything and you've made it this far, then I will be stopping by your house shortly to give you a kiss. Thanks again, guys. Plenty of content on the way later this week. Bye-bye.